Kia ora my name is Olivia and I am New Zealand registered dietitian. A few years ago, I completed my master's thesis research with the Unicorn Foundation, identifying nutritional concerns and dietary support requirements for patients with neuroendocrine tumors. Um, so nutrition and nets remains um, a really important topic to me and is quite a niche area of dietetics. Um, so I'm very impassionate about continuing awareness and any work I can do in this space. Um, so this definitely is a first for me doing a pre-recorded video, um, so I do hope that it will run smoothly. Um, if you do have any questions as we go, I thought the best way would be just to pass these questions on to Avril, and maybe she can group any questions together and send them to me via email. Um, just a quick disclaimer before I continue, I cannot give out any individualized advice um, or any general advice. So if you're having nutrition related concerns that you would like to discuss with someone and you would like personalized advice for, I would recommend booking in to see a dietitian. So today we're gonna to be covering um, a few things. It's just a quick outline. So we're gonna talk about um, what are some of the causes of diarrhea and nets. I'm going to talk a little bit about dietary management of diarrhea, a bit about carcinoid syndrome, um, when to go to your GP, um, and a little bit about our toolkits. So what are some of the causes of diarrhea and nets? Um, so as I'm sure you're all aware, diarrhea is quite a common side effect or symptom of nets. Um, and so some of the potential causes are listed here. So um, it may be due to excessive hormone production. Um, may be due to having a bowel surgery, um, might be to do with the somatostatin analogues if you're on those, um, might be related to chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Um, so it is important to remember that every person is different. Um, so you may not experience diarrhea at all, um, or you might experience it to, to varying degrees. So dietary management. These are sort of just some of the, the top tips that I would recommend for dealing with diarrhea. Um, so really important to keep hydrated. So we do lose quite a bit of fluid with diarrhea and, and this will also sort of vary depending on how bad or how frequent the diarrhea is. Um, now the second point is reduce stress. So stress can um, make diarrhea worse. So it is actually one of those things that you can try to do to reduce diarrhea. I know although it is quite difficult to reduce stress. Um, electrolyte replacement drinks can be really useful for diarrhea that becomes a bit more severe or um, consistent. Um, and so these could be purchased from your pharmacist or from sports shops. Um, uh, psyllium husk is the next one on there. So that is um, an insoluble, sorry, a soluble form of fiber. Um, so this can help to sort of bind and thicken your stools a little bit. Um, now we can also get soluble fiber from foods and I'll talk about that a little bit um, in a second. Um, but there is some supplements as well that you can buy that have psyllium husk that might just help you if you're, if you're needing a little bit extra of that. Um, another thing we can do is a food and symptom diary. Um, now this helps to identify trigger foods that you may have in your diet that might be sort of setting off the diarrhea. Um, and this is a really useful tool that I would recommend you use, especially if you're going to see a dietitian. Um, so here on the screen now is the food and symptom diary that is up on the Neuroendocrine Cancer Australia website. So you can access this on their website. Um, it's under uh, patient, uh, either patient, patient resources, and then under other resources is where you can find it. Um, so if you are going to see a dietitian, I would highly recommend filling one of these out before you go. Um, it can be really useful for them to see what sort of foods you're having um, and what timing and what symptoms you might be having to sort of draw some correlations between them all. Um, if you can do it for two weeks, that's ideal, but basically anything is helpful. So even if you can only do it for a few days, that is um, still helpful. Okay, so now to, um, talking more about the foods that may worsen diarrhea or foods that um, might be well tolerated when having diarrhea. Um, so foods that can worsen diarrhea include alcohol, caffeine, hot spicy foods, skins or pips. So this is sort of our insoluble fiber, that roughage. Um, pith and seeds, again, insoluble fiber, and actually high fat foods as well. So these might be foods that you want to avoid or trial cutting out of your diet if you are experiencing um, quite bad or severe diarrhea. 
Um, and food and drinks that are well tolerated. So these include banana, white rice, mashed potato, crackers, toast, white bread, white pasta, cooked egg, skinless chicken and fish. Um, so you'll notice all these foods are quite plain foods. Um, so that is sort of one, one trend there, but another trend um, as I was briefly talking about earlier is that they all contain what we call soluble fiber. Um, so this is the kind of fiber that um, it's not the sort of roughage or um, sort of visible fiber that we think about when we think of fiber, but it's sort of the fiber that's within foods um, that really helps to bind um, and thicken our stool. So it sort of helps the, the, our stools to move slower through our bowel. Um, so that's why it's really useful for diarrhea because it can sort of help to slow everything down and bind it all together. Um, so I would recommend um, trying to have some more um, foods with soluble fiber in your diet. Um, just off the top of my head, some other examples are things like oats or porridge is really good. Um, any sort of starchy vegetables like pumpkin, kumara, mashed potato, um, they're really good. All right, so moving on to quickly talk about carcinoid syndrome, because I, I couldn't talk about diarrhea and not mention carcinoid syndrome. So carcinoid syndrome, as I'm sure some of you know, is one of the syndromes um, related to excess hormone production, um, which may cause diarrhea. So it's a collection of symptoms caused by excess serotonin production, which may occur in functional neuroendocrine tumors. Um, and the typical symptoms of carcinoid syndrome include wheezing, flushing, and diarrhea, um, and potentially carcinoid heart disease can also develop. Um, so carcinoid syndrome, there is um, thought to be some potential trigger foods. Um, and these are sort of the ones we were talking about earlier. So spicy foods, fatty foods, um, or even just having large meal sizes um, and alcohol. So um, again, the best way to um, identify if any of these foods are setting off your carcinoid syndrome would be to um, have a go at one of those food and symptom diaries and um, see if you can see any correlations. Um, it is also thought, and there is a little bit of literature out there, um, that potentially foods that are high in amines um, may trigger carcinoid um, symptoms as well. So this includes um, foods such as aged cheese, alcohol, smoked or salted meats or fish, uh, yeast products and fermented foods. Um, so there is sort of a mechanism of which this happens through um, tyramine stimulating the tumour to secrete vasoactive substances, um, which can then cause symptoms like diarrhea and flushing. So um, you may want to avoid um, amine containing foods if you do have carcinoid syndrome. Um, so this could, yeah, could be a helpful way, but if, if you were thinking of doing that, I would recommend getting a dietitian um, to assist you with that. Okay, so when to go to your GP? So obviously, um, we know diarrhea uh, can happen quite um, quite often with neuroendocrine tumors, but when do we need to really seek medical advice for this? Um, so contact your doctor as soon as possible if your bowel motions are pale, yellow, sticky, oily, or floating, or hard to flush. Um, so really, you should, yeah, any of those symptoms or um, definitely seek medical advice if you have persistent um, sort of sudden onset diarrhea um, more than six to eight times or six to eight bowel motions um, per day um, without there have been any change to your treatment, then that's when I would also see a GP. Um, if there is ever blood in your bowel motions, that's definitely um, a time to seek medical um, advice. Um, or if you're also having abdominal pain or nausea and vomiting, that would be also a time to seek medical Okay, so um, onto our toolkits. So as, as a result of the thesis that myself and another one of my classmates did a few years ago, um, her name is Kelsey Patterson, um, she actually was the one who created eight different nutrition toolkits that we now have available on the Unicorn Foundation New Zealand website. Um, so there is a whole toolkit on diarrhea, so it's a one A4 page, um, and I would really recommend you having a look at this um, if you are struggling with diarrhea, sort of recaps everything I've talked about today in, a, in one little um, sheet. Um, you can also find toolkits for constipation, nausea and vomiting, weight loss, weight gain, carcinoid syndrome, the 5-HIAA test, and just generally eating well. Um, so now you can see a picture of the um, diarrhea toolkit. 
Um, so as you can see there, there's some of those foods that we talked about being well tolerated um, in foods that may worsen diarrhea um, and just some general tips on there as well. Well, thank you everyone for listening. It's been nice and short and sharp today. Um, so yes, just if you have any questions, just feel free to e um, let, let Avril know and she can email them to me. Um, but thank you, it's been a real pleasure and um, hopefully I get to see some of you in, in person or face-to-face -face at some point in the future. Thank you.